Hello, dear friends. El Arlequín, o The Trickster, spoke last night on YouTube about mental deprogramming with the help of a legal plant called Iboga that is used to get rid of drug addiction. And the subject has piqued my curiosity so much that I have started to investigate it. I report this topic as a curiosity, since I cannot recommend to anyone something that I consider experimental. Opinion piece. Excuse me. Spiritual reset. Mental deprogramming. How to reset your brain. Liberation from drugs and cults. Shamanic rituals in West Africa. Sacrament of transition in Slovenia. The opposite of neurolinguistic programming. Let's start. Haven't you ever dreamed of restarting your life when everything in life gets complicated or goes wrong. Computer science has taught us that a simple keystroke allows us to restart the PC. A magic button when everything is tangled up in the virtual world and you find yourself trapped in a computer labyrinth from which you do not know how to get out since you have entered a loop and there is no possible escape. The, compute, the computer scientists created a backdoor so that users wouldn't panic and would be able to get out of any blockage by their legs. This function makes it possible to save the furniture in the middle of the disaster and restart the computer from scratch, relieving the stress caused by every dead end at the computer screen, according to Dr. Alfonso Vidal. As human beings move from the third to the fourth and fifth dimensions, access to the infinite energy field becomes easier, and there are many new healing tool tools that interact with that field of the, to restore the current frequencies in our energy field so that our soul can manifest harmoniously. One of these tools is to wipe the slate clean of our mental programming. Mental programming. Most of the human beings that inhabit this poor planet believe that we are free when in reality we are programmed by others or by ourselves to do certain survival tasks. This programming may be useful to us for survival or useless in some cases, but in reality it produces much suffering because it often clashes with the desire and purpose of the human soul. The wise become wise because they learn to unlearn everything they have learned and replace it with the truth they discover. It is painful but liberating work to shed cherished conviction, convictions, but at the end of the path of detachment lies freedom and happiness. In attempting it, you will encounter free opposition from your mind. You cannot suddenly win this battle. However, you can see the actions presented by the brain in a different light. These actions are simply recommendations. Mental programs prevent you from making decisions freely. Being under the influence of a program carries with it an unexplained sense of dis discomfort and overwhelm as one's nature is being alibied or conditioned by external programs that have taken over one's self. In a personal healing process it is important 
to gradually reprogram the limiting belief system. For this to occur, it is necessary to be able to reconnect the higher mind of supraconsciousness with the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. Mental deprogramming is an option, as it allows us to erase from our mental sphere programs unwanted thoughts, limiting beliefs, sometimes for survival reasons and not currently necessary. Deceptive programs of obsolete thought forms in general that prevent you from an, an unbeatable evolutionary advancement for you and for everyone. Neuro-linguistic programming only treats people within a change of beliefs towards a setting goal. That is the change towards the greater perception of things and also to invite them to new courses. Mental deprogramming is the opposite. Deprogramming of sects. According to Miguel Perlado, the therapy of deprogrammers is aimed to counteracting the effects of brainwashing. The basic mechanics of one of these brainwashings has a first phase known as love bombing, in which the neophyte is intensely entertained. This counteracts the initial mistrust of those aspiring to join a cult. At the same time, the neophyte is informed about the collective project, its positive aspects and the possibility of contributing to the creation of a better society. The theoretical principles of most sects cannot arouse anyone's suspicions. But according to Pepe Rodriguez, journalist and writer specialized in the subject, in quotes, sects are not dangerous for what they say, but for what they do. The second phase of brainwashing is aimed to exercising total control over the follower, who is even accompanied when he goes to the bathroom. During this phase, they are prevented from contact with anyone who is not fully integrated into the sect in order to prevent them from engaging in conversations about the usefulness of what they are doing in the group. This is accompanied by a change in the usual diet to one less rich in proteins, which causes alterations in the nervous system and a drastic reduction in the time dedicated to sleep since some sects start their activity at 4 in the morning. All this ends up plunging the neophyte into a state of physical and intellectual fatigue that makes him or her increasingly dependent on the decisions of the group's leader. According to specialists, approximately 150,000 people in Spain live under the discipline of a sect. Their families and friends are the ones who suffer most directly the consequences of this situation and given the impossibility of recovering a member of their family through legal channels, they are the ones who usually resort to the services of the programming teams with experience in therapies that counteract the effects of the brainwashing that sectarian groups usually practice to the, on their members. Anthropology All over the planet, indigenous Western keepers have always known of plants that exist in nature solely for help humans. Each plant on Earth contains its own spirit and possesses distinct properties. Iboga is the main plant spirit of Central West Africa, possessing a powerful and benevolent energy. It is the root bark of a plant that grows in the western region of Africa, which is traditionally used in celebration of passage and healing, and has been used since the 60s for the treatment of drug addiction. While it is actually a small shrubby jungle tree 
that produces fruit, the spiritual properties of the plant are found in its roots. Roots that spend their lives deep in the earth, soaking in the wisdom of nature and life itself. In West Africa, the root is used in shamanic rituals for its visionary properties. For example, for divination, initiation, healing, or to establish contact with the spirits or ancestors. It is traditionally used in Gabon in ceremonies of the Buiti religion. For the Buiti and Pygmy peoples, it has been used for thousands of years for physical and spiritual healing, for spiritual self-discovery, and to study the art, the art of living. The ritual is performed by the pygmies of Cameroon and Guinea, also in Congo and Gabon, especially the Fang and Mitsogo tribes in the Buiti culture. It lasts five days and the transformation from death to rebirth takes place symbolically, carefully guided by the community. The symbolic death of the adolescent or evil takes place, which gives way to the birth of the adult or healthy person. The root bark of the plant has played a fundamental role in the rites of passage and ceremonies of many cultures in tropical Africa. It is used in Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Guinea, Congo, and especially in Gabon by the Pygmies, Fang and Mitsogo tribes in the Buiti culture. Etymologically, Buiti means ancestors or dead, but it may also have originated from the world Mobuiti, the specific name of the Pygmies native to the area between Gabon and Zaire. New religion. The sacrament of transition is a new religion based in Slovenia and recognized by Slovenia and the European Union and based on sacramental promotion through the use of the plant and its derivatives. The founder is Marko Resinovic. The organization routinely sponsors conferences and meetings. The cult actively helps drug addicts. This religion is a heterodox body and does not spread other dogmas. The vast majority of humans who seek uh, access to it do so for the liberating effects this sacred plant can offer to the seekers who are physically dependent or on addictive drugs such as heroin, crack, alcohol and a variety of other prescribed or illicit molecules. The sacrament of transition is a religious community registered with the Office for Religious Communities of the Republic of Slovenia since 1999 in accordance with all applicable laws. The religion is based on an initiation ritual in which the supervising priest administers the Holy Sacrament in one of its forms to the prospective initiate. It is not necessary to ingest anything to become a member of this religious community, although it is primarily used to stimulate spiritual intuition and religious experiences, some people approach initiation with an idea of health improvement, mainly those who suffer from some kind of chemical dependency. Under no circumstances will the priest of this cult claim or attempt to cure or treat any medical condition. That would be in conflict with certain laws of the Republic of Slovenia, whereby only physicians may treat an illness, using only the medicines listed in the official pharmacopoeia. There is also the Iboga Church of America, based in Orlando, Florida. It defines itself as a spiritual church and not a detox clinic. 
It is a center for spiritual healing and learning. Their mission is to help the community and people in need with spiritual guidance to reconnect with their soul and the Creator, with spiritual support, healing practices, and sacred ceremonies. They believe that life is the greatest gift one can have. They believe to seek their truth, to have a direct connection with soul and Creator, that we are part of nature to be respected and protected. The tree of life and knowledge is their holy sacrament and teacher, as a tool for the benefit of their physical health, spiritual growth and personal evolution. Description According to Wikipedia, Tabernante Iboga is a shrub native of to Equatorial Africa. It is cultivated in fresh and humid soils in Rio Muni. It is found in the forests of Gabon, Congo and West Africa. It reaches up to one and a half meters, has a copious latex, white and with an unpleasant odor. The leaves are opposite and narrow, usually nine to ten centimeters wide, and of a yellowish, yellowish green color on the upper side. The flowers are small showy, with curved petals, grow with clusters of five to twelve flowers, and have a tube-shaped corolla, becoming wider at the mouth. They are yellow, pink or white, with pink spots. The fruit is ovoid, with an orange-yellow dip, and occurs in pairs. They can become as large as olives. Properties It is used to reduce thirst and hunger in extreme working conditions. The root bark has stimulant effects, so it is used in rituals. It is used for the treatment of opiate and cocaine dependence. It is useful in detoxification therapies, as it mitigates the compulsion to take the drug to which there is addiction. Effects According to Wikipedia, most of the studies conducted on the effects have been aimed at reducing or eliminating opiate use, which, with a success rate of over 90% in avoiding craving to relapse during the first three days of abstinence. It can be use also be useful for the treatment of addictions to other addictive substances such as alcohol, methamphetamines, nicotine, and obsessive compulsive behavior patterns that do not involve substance abuse or drug dependence. Scientific research has shown that it has a remarkable ability to treat the physical dependence associated with withdrawal syndromes to drugs such as heroin, methadone, and other opiates so it is used as a drug in the treatment of these addictions. It is a banned substance in few countries, being legal in most of the world. Since the discovery in 1963 of the anti-addictive properties of Ibogain, the worldwide acceptance of its therapeutic application and its development as a drug has been very slow. Ibogain is not on international lists of controlled psychotropic substances of the International Narcotics Control Board of the United Nations, but it, uh, I repeat, it's not in the list, but it is illegal in the USA, Canada, Australia, Belgium, France, Switzerland, Sweden, Poland, Denmark, Hungary and Israel are legal in the rest of the world. However, I do not advise its use without the guidance of a doctor or expert on the subject, because it has contradictions like all plants. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.